Howdy, David. Hey, Graham. I got a question for you. Okay. What do you call a line of men waiting to get a haircut? <laughs> what? A barbecue. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, got it. You know, it's funny as I thought, I, I thought you were going to say it's a lino cut, which is a kind of art form, but that seemed... Oh, that's good too. Not like yeah. a joke. It just seemed like an actual thing that it is. <laughs> barbecue. Where'd you get that one? Oh, you know. Joke fault. Joke fault. Uh, I feel like that one's a five. I, I also feel like it's a five. You got one for me? Yeah, I do. I don't know if I can reach five though. Uh, you know, I've been I've been um, interested in pirate jokes recently. So I have a... I've, I've, I've noticed this. I've got a, uh, I've got a pirate joke for you. Graham, why did the pirate want to get to the other side of the road? <laughs> I don't know. There was gold there. I don't know what... I wanted to get to the second hand shop. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. Second hand shop. He needs an extra hand because he's got yep. a hook. I get it. Yep. Yep. I'm giving that one a six. I like that one. Oh, that's, that's so nice. It's almost too nice. You know what? Enough of the nonsense. Let's get on with the nonsense. Welcome back to Withy Windle, a whimsical interactive show for kids who love stories, words, and drone-worthy jokes featuring your favorite authors and illustrators. It's part book club, part game show, and it's your weekly adventure through the wild world of world play. I am David Kern. And my name's Graham Pittman. You know, it'd be funny if one time you just showed up and you were like, I have officially legally changed my name to Billy McGillicuddy. That would be funny. It would also seem like a lot of work and maybe some would cost some money. So it's probably not going to happen. Yeah, a lot of work for not too much payoff. Once you, once you yeah. made the joke, it would just be just kind of be over. Well, we're here to answer your questions. Guys, this is question Patriza. We are going to do question Patriza as two parts, though. So here in the first part of question Patriza, part one, just Graham and I are going to answer some questions. That's this week's episode. Then in a couple of weeks, we are going to have question Patriza part two, in which our guest Karini Yang Glazer is going to come on and also answer some questions. So this is what they call a, a little two for one. Two episodes. I think you normally would get one episode. I think you're, you're too subdued talking about this. We are going to do a two-parter question <laughs> palooza. This is a big deal. It's going to be a question <laughs> Patriza part one and then a question Patriza part two and yeah you're going to get two episodes for it's a, it's a buy one get one basically listen one get one I don't know yeah they're not actually buying one it's a get one get one that's right no, get, that's get, what it is get two get two I don't know whatever it is we're gonna we're gonna answer a lot of your questions and of course as always you know you guys sent us in some great questions before we get to those questions though we are going to do quick little lazy word segment. And we're going to uh, briefly talk about snacks. But before we do that, we need to tell you about our friends over at The Green Writer. Because if you or someone you love is an aspiring writer, then The Green Writer course is a great option for you. The Green Writer is an audacious invitation to writers who aspire to create and share excellent stories. With motivation, inspiration, and instruction, author S.D. Smith invites writers to launch into their writing adventure with confidence and competence. And the aim of this course is to become a green writer, a writer who is going and growing. You can try three free lessons and get the green writer at greenwriter.sdsmith.com. And don't forget about our coupon code that gives you $10 off the course. That code, of course, is W-I-T-H-Y-W-I-N-D-L-E with you, Wendell. And like I said, that's $10 off the course and you get three free lessons when you go to greenwriter.sdsmith.com. Yes, thank you to the Green Writer for sponsoring us. We love what y'all are doing over there. So go check them out, please. All right, so next. Lazy yeah. words. Lazy words. Wait, what about snack time? Because I have a snack in front of me. You know what it is? Two pretzels. Okay, moving on. Okay, we weren't unofficial snack time. Yeah. This time it's we're actually recording this. It's almost it's getting close to dinner. So right. snack time wouldn't really work. I'm just drinking a coffee. Yeah, you don't want to ruin your appetite. Although I did find this giant orange uh outside. So it it's um it's got some lines on it and it bounces really well. Um, but I'm just gonna try to take a bite 
out of this. Just brush off some of this dirt. Wait, is that a basketball? Ugh. Oh, yeah. It might be a basketball. Is that a type of orange? Um, no, it's not. I want to give you a little bit of a, a tip here, Grim. It doesn't when taste very citrusy. When your food bounces, you shouldn't eat it. When your food, what if it's jello? The jello doesn't really bounce, it jiggles. <laughs> okay, fine. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> go Mr. outside, Semantic. make some jello, go outside and try to bounce it on the ground and see how high it goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that'd be more of a splat, I suppose. Yeah, okay, exactly. so anything splat orange. Jiggle, that's right. Anything orange is orange, but it's not an orange necessarily. I see what you're saying now. Are you is this a segue? Lazy words. Lazy words. What's this week's lazy word, Graham? Okay, David, I want you to think back to your childhood. Okay. Back in the halcyon days of uh, the 1950s or whenever you grew up. Yeah, 1950s, definitely. Yep, before we had, you know, video games, um, before we had uh, 50-inch flat screen TVs, you might be outside with a limited number of toys. One might be a basketball. Yep, yep. We already talked about that a little bit. Yeah. One might be, I don't know, a, a small set of jacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I def- definitely had to try to, uh, Maybe a hoop with a stick that you're um, uh, kick it, uh, you know, pushing down the road. That seemed, that seemed fun. Um, yeah, but yeah. But there's one item. Let's try there's one item. <laughs> there's one item that, that you would use um, uh-huh. Let's say you, you didn't just want to crawl around the ground or walk or run. You might want to jump in the air. Uh, uh, yeah. And so uh, you, would, you would hold this thing. It has two handles and, and kind of a rope. Um, and you would swing it around and jump stick. through it. Incorrect. Trampoline. Nope, nope, nope. Two handles. Two handles. Two, so you're saying it's a rope that you jump with. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, jump rope. Oh, a jump rope. You got it. <laughs> this one, um, when I thought thought about it, it, it kind of broke my brain with how lazy it was. They, they, they just conceived of the idea and then stopped. They didn't even try. They didn't even try. No, it's like, hey, what, what are you doing over there? What's that thing you're using? What's that, what's that cool thing that looks like so much fun? Oh, it's a jump rope. They could have said, they could have called it an exercise cord, an exer cord. (laughs) Exer cord. Oh, I like that. A leap twine. (laughs) Now I'm just using synonyms, but. But still, but they're way (laughs) way more fun than jump rope. Yeah, exactly. I I accept both of those. Um, I like leap twine. (laughs) That just sounds like a great time. Well, you know, I bet the kids will have have plenty of ideas for this. They're even better than Leap Twine. So, dear listener, email us at podcasts at goldberrybooks.com because we would like to know, what would you replace... Jump Twiz. Jump Rope with. Yeah, so if you think you know a better name for a jump rope than a jump rope, and that you also can do better than a... What did I say? <laughs> a leap twine, then definitely drop us an email. And you guys have proven your creative energies are top notch throughout this season. And we need you to help us solve the wrongs of the world that have, that have been perpetrated by lazy naming of awesome things. So it's podcasts at goldberrybooks.com. Graham, that brings us, however, to that part of this question, Patriza, where you and I are going to answer all kinds of creative questions from the kids. Are you ready? I cannot wait for question Patriza okay. part one. Okay, here's what I think we should do. We have this document in front of us where we curated, where you, you cataloged and organized these questions. Why don't we alternate asking them to each other? Oh, this is good. But then can we both answer them? Yeah, we can both answer them, but we'll just take turns asking. Okay, I'll go first. Jackson wants to know, Graham, is a hot dog a sandwich? One of the great mysteries and conundrums of modern, the modern world. Jackson, I want you to listen very carefully to me. <laughs> this, <laughs> How this, old are you? This, uh, this, question, so my day. this question is posed like it's some sort of gotcha 
uh, yeah, conundrum, right? Like, like it's it's one of the mysteries of the world. It's not a hot dog <laughs> is not a sandwich. To put that out of your mind. They did a, a sandwich, you need two pieces of bread, okay, with some filling in between. It could be peanut butter. It could be peanut butter and jelly. It could be ham. It could be ham and cheese. What we have here with the hot dog is, it, it, I mean, similar to bread. Well, I guess it is bread. So the bun. It's a bread. Yeah, it's a bread. The bun has a slit. Cut in half. No, no, it's not cut in half. You've put a slit into kind of a cylindrical uh, roll and you've stuck a tubular uh, meat stick into it and maybe you put some toppings on it. It is its own complete thing. Case, I mean, case closed. Hot dog, not a sandwich at all ever. Except, so you're saying, but maybe uh, the, the hot dog is its own category of food. Yes. So, okay, I have a question then. Based on your definition of a sandwich, is an open-faced sandwich a sandwich? I refuse to answer any more questions. No follow-up questions. <laughs> I don't want any of your gotcha uh, journalism here. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I, Graham. I'm just genuinely curious. We have to get to the bottom of these. The kids need answers. But I would say I think well, I agree I just, with this actually. That dog is its own category. I think we can agree on this. It has many of the properties of a sandwich, mm-hmm. but I, th- I think I agree with this that it's its own category. But is a hamburger its own category then as well? Uh, I would say so, but I, I would, um, I mean, that that one is not a bun that has got a slit, a small slit in it. It is two pieces of a bun. I'm okay with a hamburger being a sandwich. That one makes sense to me. I'm not so okay So then is a bratwurst and hot dog, that, is that like, is what's the category there? Because a hot dog and a brat, they're two different things, but they're eaten the same way. Uh, baseball food. Okay. <laughs> the category of baseball food. Mm-hmm. Uh, tailgating food. Tailgate baseball food. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. For the sake of conversation, I will accept that. I will accept that answer as bizarre but acceptable. But but think of this: if somebody's like, "Hey, do you want a sandwich?" and you're like, "Yes," yeah. and they're like, "All right, do you want peanut butter, or jelly, or a hot dog?" You're gonna look at them funny <laughs> because one of those things does not really fit the description of of what everybody thinks of when they hear the word sandwich. That's true. But then if you said, do you want, like, if you're cooking out, you might say hamburgers or hot dogs. We're cooking on a grill. It's mm-hmm. like a hamburger. So it feels like those have to be more, they're more likely to be categorized together yes. than peanut butter and jelly in a burger. Yes. But, but so when, you're out, hot when dogs, you're out grilling, when you're out grilling hamburgers and hot dogs and somebody's like, what do you make in there? And you're like, oh, sandwiches. See, it doesn't work. It does not work. I, you can, okay. you can, people can be mad at me. It's fine. I'm but upset about it too. Let's put hamburgers not under sandwiches either then. It should be under grilling foods. Yeah. Okay. All right. As long as we're agreed on that. All right. Question two, what you got? <laughs> okay. So uh, the Peterson kids wants to know, what is your favorite food and why is it supreme to all other foods? Well, those are two different questions though. Because it, just because I say something is my favorite doesn't mean that I'm saying that it's better than all other things. Well, yeah, true. They could, you could, I mean, you could be as definitive as you want, or you could just say, or we could say, why do you like it more than other things? This is actually incredibly hard. What do you, I what's know. your answer to this? There's do you, do you so know? There's so many foods out there. I actually think we were asked this um, at the, in the first question, Palooza. Um, but I kind of like that. question, Palooza. I like that it's come up again. Because we're different people than we were a year ago, and your tastes change. So I don't know. I don't remember what answer we gave. Um, maybe it's going to be the same. Maybe it's going to be different. But I really, really like uh, and could eat every day the following things. A margarita pizza, wood-fired pizza with like basil and mozzarella, a little bit of okay. tomato. This I did not expect this to be in your like Mount Rushmore of foods. Oh, it is. I could eat it. I could eat it for lunch and dinner pretty much every day. Hmm. I absolutely love a good street taco with like a um, soft corn uh, shell, a tortilla. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the fillings. I mean, <laughs> not a melt, not a shell that's been softened from the ocean. You go, well, uh, which ocean? Indian. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I could go for that. Um, in, that in that case, 
and I uh, and then I would put some kind of curry in there, like Thai curry, like a Penang or a Masaman curry. It's, I thought for sure you would say um, your favorite sandwich, the hot dog. <laughs> um, I thought for sure you would say a like something related to some some form of steak or barbecue. Oh, I I, I mean a perfect steak is great. And and you know what else is great? A perfectly made Popeye's chicken dinner. <laughs> yeah, fried chicken is is delicious. I think curry would be up there for me. I'd something on the sweet side too, probably though. You know, like like frozen custard with uh Oh yeah. Um, you know, like a frozen custard raspberry, fresh raspberry milkshake or like vanilla frozen custard with a with like a cobbler, something like that. Yeah. But also, I think, I think if I think this is this is very difficult. It's nearly impossible. Yeah, I almost feel like all of the different. I don't want to offend any one meat dish, so I might just have to choose dessert. <laughs> um, but but also, I think it might be fruit, though. It might be like some delicious in season, very very fresh fruit. I don't because it's just hard to be hard to beat that. True. All right, Grant. Question three. Asher wants to know if you and I would ever write a book together, and if so, what would it be about? Um, well, I think for the sake of this question, we should say yes. But um, also, <laughs> I think that process would be very difficult, and um, we might well, get into some you can't, You don't. You can't write or read. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. That, I mean, Weird. that would be helpful for this endeavor. Yeah. Um, so let's say, yeah, right. okay. If we were to write a book together, what would it be about? Hmm. You know, do we, th- it would it probably some kind of an adventure, right? I would say the setting could be in a bookstore. There could be some kind <laughs> of mythical creature that lives in the bookstore that causes mischief. Mm. Like a goblin. Kind of like a goblin, maybe a bit bigger. Um, mm. uh, dragon. Exactly. <laughs> so it would be... <laughs> bookstore dragon. David and the bookstore dragon. That would be the title. You'd come to find <laughs> out later the bookstore dragon's name is Graham. That's where I come in. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. It's like Pete's dragon, but in a bookstore. <laughs> All right, David. Gemma wants to know, how old is the bookstore troll? He's timeless. Yeah, I think I'd agree. I, I, so the, the, the way I judge troll age is by the, um, the hue, the color of their yeah, nails. Well, yeah, right. Right? So like fingernails? You, yeah, the fingernails. Um, the hue and the thickness. And he's well, got this is some, just common. I assume this is common knowledge about trolls. Yeah. He's got, some, it, yeah. he's got some very gnarly green yellow nails so you can tell they've been around i mean forever and then yeah they are quite thick and long it's 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 disturbing you know how one year in in like human years is seven dog years Mm -hmm. well my understanding is that in trolls one troll year is a thousand human years oh dear so i think he is like seven that's based based on the nail yeah. density and coloration. I believe he's about seven in troll years. So this this That's, kind of begs the question here. Um, before mm-hmm. he was a bookstore troll, if he's over seven thousand years old. That's before that predates the bookstore almost the probably the book, right? Yeah. I mean, was he like a, a papyrus yeah. uh, troll? A scroll troll? Well <laughs> scroll. <laughs> <laughs> well, Graham, the thing is, we've been trying to get to know this troll bit by bit, and I don't know that he has revealed all his secrets of, of his past lives yet. So I, that's going to have to be something that we endeavor to discover about him over the next uh, future seasons of, of uh, Withy Windle. But I think it does give us some good, good questions to, to ask of him. I definitely hope he was a scroll troll. Uh, Giorgio also <laughs> wants to know how tall the bookstore troll is. Well, I mean... It depends on whether he's standing at his full height or not. But the thing about trolls is they rarely stand up totally, like com- completely to their to their full height, as as, height, as tall as they're capable of. They're a little bit slouchy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of part of being a troll. Um, yeah. I think they kind of practice being slouchy from a young age. They, in fact, they're not allowed to leave the nest, the, the lair, the troll lair, until they're sufficiently slouched. They perfect. So I don't the know exactly. 
Yeah, exactly. I don't because I don't know if you've ever tried it. It's very difficult to to walk and be scary while also slouching as much as a troll slouches. Yeah. Uh, so you know, I don't, I I don't know exactly how tall how tall the troll is, but um, he also kind of hovers in the shadows. Uh, it's hard to get a get a good complete glimpse, but uh, pretty tall. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Taller than me. Pretty tall. Yeah. And and I imagine that slouch is like it's it's so. Uh, predominant that I wonder if he'd be twice as tall if he just stood up straight, like literally double in size. It's, yeah. But, but you know, the thing is about trolls, they also live in lairs and it's hard to stand up fully in lairs unless your lair is very large, which is kind of defeats the purpose of a lair. Okay. <laughs> Benedict wants to know what are our fi- kids' favorite books? What's your, what are your kids' favorite books, Graham? Oh, well, um, uh, Chronicles of Narnia is really high up there at the top, um, and then yeah, my, those are popular in our house too. Uh, my son loves Lord of the Rings, and he yep, likes same. Jonathan Oxier's books a lot. Um, yep, I think if you ask my kids, one of them, the Night Gardener, might be his favorite. Oh wow! Okay, uh, my Oxier. my youngest daughter is four, and she really likes Elephant and Piggy books, and she also likes Go Dog Go. Mm. You know that classic. Who doesn't love Go Dog Go? Yeah, I. Not anybody I want to be friends with. <laughs> a lot of the authors we've had on Withy Window are um, we're, we've already been big fans of. Yeah, so exactly. We have a lot of their books. Yeah, I think that answers that. Yeah, I think it, for us it's about the same. There's a bunch of picture books, and um, my kids also. One of my my six year old especially really loves. Um, shout out to Lucas. He really loves. Coyote Peterson right now. So there's a Coyote Peterson books he likes to have read to him. All right, David. <laughs> Aubrey wants to know what our favorite tree is and why. And she favorite also tree. She, she also wants to know if we play Wordle. So we can we do, we do play Wordle. We yeah, we do, we do play Wordle. It's a it's a highlight of the day. I want to know if Aubrey plays Wordle. She must play Wordle. Or maybe she just sees her parents play Wordle all the time. Do you have an answer to this tree question? Oh, yeah, I do. What is it? Um, so I really like a willow tree. Mm. I love the way the branches hang down. We used to have one uh, on our house growing up, and I would kind of clump all the branches together, and they're so bendy and strong that you could like swing yourself around the tree, basically on them. Mm. Uh, so I do that a lot, but I also just love the way they kind of move and sound in the breeze. Yeah, uh, and then I love an aspen and an alder tree. So you got like that, and birch. So that kind of white bark trees. I think you find yeah. most of those out west. Uh, and then my son Rowan. Uh, Rowan is a type of ash tree. Um, and so that's got to be one of my favorite trees. I'm a, you know, we don't live in the desert, but Joshua trees are pretty cool. Oh, I agree. Have you ever seen a Joshua yeah. tree? And then also, I'm a big fan of, um, as far just as far as how they look and to have them around, so to speak, it, um, dogwoods. Oh, yeah, dogwood but tree. Who doesn't love a big, live oak tree with the, the arms that are reaching out. You know, you see them all across the South, like in Charleston and um, Savannah with the big arms that like look like they could scoop you up. Those live oak trees are absolutely gorgeous. And I love like, yeah, when those branches kind of get close to the ground and you can, you can kind of sit on them. I, yeah, it's a good pick. It's a great pick. Can almost run, can almost run up them from the ground up into the trunk. All right, so... Jasper wants to know about our favorite sports teams. Graham, uh, mm. should we should we even talk about this? <laughs> uh, yeah, there's some pain involved, Jasper. Uh, okay, so um, if we just think about like the the big four kind of sports, we got uh, football, yeah, let's basketball, just focus on that. football, basketball, baseball, and hockey. Mm-hmm. Um, we David and I have the same answer for our football and hockey teams. I'm not sure about the other two. Yeah, we're both Green Bay Packer and Toronto Maple Leaf fans. For baseball, I'm a Milwaukee Brewers fan. My family is from Wisconsin. What What is your baseball team? Um, 
I don't follow baseball as much as the other sports, but growing up out West in Canada, I really liked the Mariners. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I yeah. like their logo and I liked Ken Griffey Jr. And so that was that. Um, but I wouldn't call myself a Mariners fan. I lived in Idaho when he was playing for the Mariners and I, we lived only a few hours from Seattle and well, I mean, it was several hours, but everybody out there was yeah. Mariners fans. So I was very familiar. That's who everybody watched. So yeah, that's a great choice. Um, and then basketball, basketball, do you, do you have a specific team? I mean, I, you know, I root for players and I root for, you know, I root for the Milwaukee Bucks um, and the Charlotte Hornets just cause they're from where I lived. But I'm not as diehard a fan of those teams as I am the other sports. What about you? Yeah, I mean, if I were to purchase a hat or a shirt for a basketball team, it would be the Charlotte Hornets um, because that is where we live. And yeah, growing up, I just kind of rooted for all sorts of teams. So I would say that is my team. And if you're thinking like, this is a re- really weird collection of sports teams, you're, I think you're right. But David and I have lived in Wisconsin and Canada and out west and North Carolina. That's uh, right. So yeah. this is where all these well, things kind of converge. Exactly. We've been collecting fandoms a little bit over the years. <laughs> but the um, the Toronto Maple Leafs... Don't talk like, about it. That's like my favorite out of any team. And, um, and much like kind of like the Dallas Cowboys in football or the New York Yankees in baseball, I think they're pretty maligned by everybody else in their league that isn't a fan of that team. And so yeah, it's, it's, it's painful because nobody likes you because you like this team. Well, except the millions and millions and millions of people who do like that team. Who also like the team. Yeah. Yeah. But then Toronto hasn't won since 1967 when they beat Montreal in game six and I was not alive and it was in black (laughs) and white. (laughs) So it's very, Uh, very Yeah. Sports yeah. is pain. Sports is pain. That's right. <laughs> like Just like Princess Bride told us. Um, all right. So what's the next question, Greg? Uh, Isaac and Charlotte want to know, how did you get to be so funny? Did you take a <laughs> college class in comedy or something? Yeah. The school of uh, hard knocks um, in which we lived together, made lots of jokes and annoyed other people until we found ones people thought were funny. That sounds... But that also, sounds I appreciate right. the compliment. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're forgetting we did go to clown school. But, oh. Like, we did our postgraduate well, I, that, work. Right, but I don't... I just... That's not... I didn't think of that necessarily as funny so much as, like, uh, what we do when we want to scare people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. That's like a multifaceted uh, um, uh, option that we have at, at our... At our you know, under in our uh, toolbox of of, uh, of skills. <laughs> Isaac and Charlotte also want to know um, what do you like to do when you're not busy bargaining with the bookstore troll, thinking of jokes for the podcast, or eating junk food? Nothing. Yeah, we don't have much time apart from that. We don't do anything else. Yeah. yeah um, While well, we watch the sports teams, we that watch we sports <laughs> and we listen. hang out with our kids. Yep, we read and hang out with our kids uh, whenever I can getaway i like to go kind of we we have the appalachian mountains not that far from here i like to kind of wander around there and find waterfalls and things like that graham's a photographer so he likes to take pictures oh yep true i like to get a margarita pizza and Mm -hmm. uh go over to my good friend graham's house and uh sit on the front porch and uh eat the whole thing while he sits at the window and watches oh wait (laughs) that's my least favorite thing that you do (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Finn wants to know what is your favorite segment on Withy Windle? Also, what is your favorite Oreo and what is your favorite snack or drink? Let's do the Oreo first. Do you do you prefer anything but the the, the regular Oreo? Uh, I always think I prefer something different when I'm in the aisle, right? And then I get home and I eat the birthday cake stuffed Oreo or the peanut butter Oreo, and it's just not as good to me. Yeah, and then you wish that you had just had the original with maybe maybe double stuff. Just go out on a limb and get the double stuff. Yeah, I like yeah, I like the regular one and the mint one. But I'll tell you which one never to get (laughs) is the thin Oreo. It's just like half an Oreo. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, what what are you doing? Just 
we just we just eat a regular Oreo. I'm very like, interested to know if Finn has like a particular Oreo that maybe I haven't tried or something that he really likes. Or what if Finn is a lobbyist for big thin Oreo and Ooh. and he is now going to come after us. Yeah, maybe he was hoping we would say like, you know that thin Oreo, it's kind of underrated. Everybody should go check it out. Hmm. But of course, we're not going to say that. Maybe we should go into hiding now. Uh, he also asked what our favorite segment on Witty Window is. The interview with the guest. That's my favorite. But I do, I did really like Lazy Words this season. That was a fun one. To, that was you know, yeah, that was a good addition. Partly because we got so much good feedback from the kids. Like in, in other words, we got so many good responses with I mean, listen, lazy words of being out there in the world is a scourge. And the kids are helping us <laughs> solve this problem. That's you know, I don't know what else to say. Yep. I like uh I like that we get a lot of interaction with that. It gives us a chance to interact with the audience a bit more. But also we do get to eat snacks during snack time. So hey Graham, I have an idea for the next Next a segment next season though. Can I pitch it to you here on the show? Is it is it like are we gonna sort it out right so, now if we're gonna well, do it or not? Yeah, yeah. I think we probably should. Yeah. So we've got snack time, right? Mm -hmm. We've got lazy word time. We've got riddle time. We've got joke time at the beginning. We've got our interview. What about nap time? Oh, nap time. Yeah, nap time. I mean, we could probably get the the episodes could probably be three hours long. We could probably well, get a whole an extra being, hour to. You're being conservative. <laughs> I think we're both pretty if we if we ever take naps they're like three four hours long did you, you said so, three four days right so the runtime of that podcast might you know it might get out okay let's let's workshop this cat nap time cat nap time we just take a quick cat nap right in the middle that would of the be really funny just to do like 10 minutes of silence <laughs> and then we're back uh, <laughs> everybody be quiet for 10 minutes now <laughs> Anna is wondering whether we would uh, want to read. Oh, she says, would you rather read the Phantom Tollbooth or raid the dessert cabinet? I like that she <laughs> has a dessert cabinet that she's referencing. Yeah. Is this which dessert cabinet? Is this the dessert cabinet full of desserts that we like or that we don't like? Is this the dessert cabinet where when you open it, it's actually empty? And so it's just tricking you. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of different scenarios that could be in, that are in play. Yeah. What about, what about you? What's your I think, gut answer though? I think there's a lot of scenarios, but um, I also think this is a false choice. Um, yeah. I feel like we're being tricked. I think reading the phantom toll booth while eating desserts I mean, that's just the best. So I, I, I'm, that's how uh, I'm answering. Yeah, I think, I think that's the correct answer. Um, we, we will not fall through the tricks, Anna. <laughs> Garrett wants to know, uh, <laughs> Garrett wants to know, how do we decide uh, what books to stock in the bookstore? That is a, we, we, uh, what we do is we flip a coin. <laughs> um, it's a that is an ongoing conversation, an ongoing question, and we spend a lot of time researching books and getting advice from people who have read good books and mm. getting recommendations and uh, seeing what people are buying and uh, reading reviews and seeing what's new. I mean, it's just it's an ongoing process, and I feel like the answer to that question changes almost every day. But I will say. That the the number one thing we're looking for is books that seem like they're going to last or that have lasted, that are good or beautiful in some way, and which we feel like we would want to share with our friends. That's kind of like, but but figuring out what those kind of books are, that process is kind of complicated. But those are the kind of things that we're looking for. Uh, that answer wasn't funny at all. Well, you know, I'm only like. Unlike the previous comment, I am only about 10% funny. And I had run out of funniness during that answer. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to do this question from Charlie because uh, it's a, it's a three-parter. Um, oh. But the third part says, how many books do you have in your bookstore? Oh, uh, well, that can go up and down quite a bit depending on the time of year. <laughs> but I believe right now it's 12,000, I think. Is the answer right now? Twelve thousand. Which is not. Which is not. Our goal is fifty. That's my goal. Fifty thousand. Got to get. Got some. Got a ways to go. But also, I need more space because that's a pretty big store. Yeah, man, and it's hard too because, like, you come back in the morning from having closed up the night before, and the trolls taken fifty away. 
Um, well, that's why that's why I said it. Yeah, he's drooled on some. <laughs> he's slimed some. He's hid some. He's eaten some. It's just it's it's a really hard process. Every now and then, he does put a new one on the shelf that he discovered. Though um, I he he keeps sending me pitches of books he wants to write in hopes that I'll stock them in the shelf. But the <laughs> trolls are not good at editing. They're not great at revising. So there's really a work in progress going on. I don't know if it'll ever actually get published because he's just he's not good at follow through. He should listen to this podcast and our author suggestions. And he, sh- you know what he should do? He should do the green writer. I mean, he, he even should, he can should. get $10 off and three free lessons by using code W-I-T-H-Y-W-I-N-D-L-E. I mean, it's just right there, right in front of him every week. And he's already green. But, he, that's too, it's too perfect. You said there are two other parts to this question though. Uh, Charlie's also wondering how Withy Windle got started. That's a great question. Well, you see, back in 1957, <laughs> Graham and I were playing with a, a jump rope, and along came a bookstore troll. I don't remember. You know, I honestly don't remember exactly how it got started, except for the part where we turned on the computer and the microphones and started recording. We just do really? you remember how it got conceived of? Yeah, I don't remember the exact. Tell me, I don't remember. Um, I'm sure as soon as you say it, I'll be like, oh yeah. Well, I mean, so David has um, hosts a couple other podcasts um, and one is a bookish podcast for adults. Um, and that had been going on for True. about five years. Um, and then I think the idea was just kind of um, batted around. Uh, why don't we try to do something for kids? And we thought about that for probably more than a year um but then summer oh, yeah, of, yeah the summer of or fall of 2020 we used to meet here on my um covered side porch which is now gone it had it had <laughs> well, fallen yeah, over I mean, people then. have listened to the karina yang glazer episode <laughs> <laughs> yeah they know that it is but we would sit out there and we would be eating doritos and we would be coming up with ideas on how this could look and how it could be different than other podcasts. I do remember this now. And then we did that probably, like we met like probably three times a month for a couple months, kind of flushing things out. And then we finally met at the bookstore one night and came up with the name and uh, I think kind of codified some of the segments a little bit more. And Yeah, yeah I so remember really, all of that now. It was a long process. Yeah, probably should have been longer, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> we have any more? Was there another question there? Should we are we on to the oh, next? Oh, he one? also asked, what do you like to do with your kids? Well, at my house, we like to <laughs> eat ice cream, uh, play basketball and baseball, build fires, um, stop fights, um, I read, watch movies, all you know. Kind of the usual stuff. The normal, um, yeah. My, yeah, my kids love to go to the pool. They love to go, you know, on little, you know, to the mountains or, you know, anytime we get to go somewhere, the kids love that. I think um, my favorite things, though, you know, are when we get the time and we get, you know, we, we actually can make it happen playing a board game or um, playing sports or something like that. Those are my, those are my favorite things to do with the kids. They like, you just kind of like, hanging out i do my like to an- read too when yeah my answer <laughs> my answer is not very different from yours um but but one of the things we like to do is almost every saturday we like to go to goldberry books and hang out there oh. for an hour and then go next door to the coffee shop and maybe play a game there and then maybe walk down to the pretzel shop and have lunch there hmm, sounds like a delightful saturday it's a very good saturday and then we come home and do chores <laughs> I wish everybody <laughs> loves to do that. Okay, Evan wants to know what has been your favorite author interview so far? Could you share anything you have written with listeners? Do you have any tips for young writers? Now, the favorite in author interview is hard because every guest has been so different. And so each author is unique and their work is so unique. I don't know if I could even answer that. Could you? Well, um, no, I, I could not because... Because um, you're contract, we, contractually obligated not to. <laughs> we started the podcast a year ago, and yeah. which means 
probably for a couple months before that even we were doing author interviews. And so I just can't remember. <laughs> I can't yeah. remember yeah. like coming away from one being like, oh, that was, that one was awesome. Because really that's the feeling I have almost every single time. Like they're all right, so exactly. good. Except when we interview our friend SD Smith, who's just a, you, you, no one wants to talk to that guy. Yeah, except SD Smith. We know where he ranks. <laughs> At the top? He, he knows where he ranks. Okay. The uh, Lord of all Appalachia and all, all that. Okay, so Evan asked us, have, could you share anything you have written with listeners? What does that mean? I like, I don't know, do you, do you have some poems you could recite for us? Oh, I see. Do you can you share something you have written and share it with listeners? Mm -hmm. I thought it was saying, could you share something you've written with listeners? And I thought, you know, I don't know if we should share things that we have written, like emails <laughs> we've had conversations we've had with listeners. That might not be appropriate. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, I mean, I suppose, but not uh, I'm working on a few things actually that are for kids, but they're not ready to be shared yet. But maybe well, one day I'll share one of them. Maybe if you come into the store and maybe if David is there and maybe if he has something he has written with him in his back pocket, he might read you the line. I think that's maybe. the answer. Maybe. maybe. Yeah. Depends on how much cash you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Depends on what's in your back pocket. And Evan is uh, and wondering, what was the other he's wondering if you have any tips for young writers. Well, do you have any tips for young writers, Graham? I, I mean, I would just say read as much as possible. Yeah, this is where you say listen to Withy Windle. And listen to Withy Windle. <laughs> <laughs> because those people have the, the guests that come on have great advice. I think we I think we pretty much concur with a lot of what we hear. Like read a lot, practice. Don't get discouraged. Finish stuff. Yeah. And you know, don't expect it to all be, you know, a day at the beach. Yeah. And Unless I think the like the day at the beach is just a lot of sweating. If you've if you've written something and then you and you read it back and you found that like oh this was frustrating this isn't exactly what I wanted it's, it's just don't think of it like a failure it's all it's all practice and learning experience you're yeah, growing exactly. every exactly. time you're writing. Okay, Natalie wants to know what does the bookstore show look like, which we kind of covered already. But he also she also wants to know what does he eat, and the answer to that I believe is pretty much everything. Pretty much everything. He definitely like it, we have the reason we have different snacks each week is because if we leave them out, he just like like a vacuum comes by and suctions everything away. Um, so he eats food, um, but then he'll eat books. Um, well, and because and but we also have to make sure he eats the snacks, otherwise he might, uh, you know, he might try to eat us, which we. We don't blame him for he is a troll. He, he is, you know, trolls have troll nature. So, you know, but, but we got to keep him well fed so that he doesn't attempt to, uh, to you know, put us in his belly. <laughs> uh, what's this next one? Leah and company. Can you tell us the official Withy Window milkshake sandwich and candy bar? Oh, this is good. Um, not the official in the sense that someone has paid us to make the make it the official, but it, this we should brainstorm. What is the official Withy Windle milkshake flavor, Graham? Well, okay. Take a look at the cover art for the Withy Windle podcast. You will notice it is a shade of teal. Um, you're gonna want, you're gonna say mint, aren't you? So I mean, just naturally, <laughs> it's leading me toward toward yes, a mint, a mint and book flavored milkshake. Okay, let's do this then. How about mint Oreo? Done. Okay, sandwich. There it is. Uh, not hot dog. <laughs> not the hot dog. <laughs> well, you're not a sandwich guy. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. So, so you, it's a kid's can just podcast. It. Is 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 it? I mean, but is it? It's a kid's podcast. Is it a peanut butter and jelly? Um, mm -hmm. Is it a grilled cheese? I mean, or are we going like a Reuben? You know, something a little fancier, uh, or just something in the middle. I mean, I feel like the Withy Windle sandwich needs to be a really good peanut butter and jelly on good bread with good jam. That's what I think. I would say it should be something nonsensical like a toasted candy corn sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Done. There it goes. Peanut butter and jelly <laughs> with toasted candy corn on it, covered in sprinkles, dipped in marshmallow, and then fried. And then fried and then coated in chocolate. 
Right. And then left out in the sun for six hours. Oh, like a sun pie. And then, fe- and then fed to the bookstore troll. <laughs> <laughs> what about candy bar? This is an interesting one. We are both fans of candy bars. A moon pie, that's not a candy bar, right? No, that's like a... That's more like a cookie, I would view. That's more like a pie. It's in... <laughs> <laughs> right, that's a pocket right. pie. It, but, yeah, a pocket pie. <laughs> pocket pie sounds like an accident waiting to happen. What, what do you... This is, this is a... So, when we talk about candy bars, it's that would be just like a chocolate bar, right? Like, an M&M is not a candy bar, right? Even though it's in the candy bar section. It's a candy just, bar. I just want to clarify this. Right, okay. How, see, here's the thing. I think it should be a Twix. Because there's two of them. So you open oh. it up. You can have the left. I can have the right. I like that. Or maybe one of us, you're the left and I'm the right. Yeah, whatever. I mean, the point is we each get a half. That's good. And Twix are delicious. So I like That's this. That's true. I was trying to right. go through like old I- defunct candy bars like uh, <laughs> like the Clark bar or the <laughs> Zagna. Is a bit of honey a candy bar? No. No, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Here's, a bit of honey. A, just a bit, it's just a bit of honey. Here's an interesting one, though. Is a Reese's a candy bar? Oh, that's tough. Mm. Uh, well, there's another one that's got two. You yeah. open that thing up, and there's two of them in there. It's oh, you know what? It's, I got it. What? what? The official candy bar for Withy Window should be the hundred grand because it's got two. It's delicious, mm. and it's made us wealthy beyond our imaginations. It wait. Two of those things seem true. Moving on. (laughs) Okay, here's a good question. If you could use one word from the Phantom Tollbooth to describe the podcast, what word would you use? To describe this podcast? To describe with you, Wendell. Well, remember that when he is at the word market, Milo chooses three words. One of them is upholstery. I feel like that probably is not the right (laughs) word for this podcast. Another one is quagmire which may be Ooh. the right word for this podcast, but is a little negative. So I'm going to go with the third word that he chose, flabbergast. Oh, there <laughs> this we go. podcast is flabbergasting. <laughs> That's perfect. It's a great question. They, um, I, I like hazardous. You, n- you never <laughs> know. You never know where the conversation's going to go. That's true. And also raspy, because we get sick sometimes. <laughs> It's true. Uh, Finn wants to know, would you go on an adventure within a fantasy realm in a similar situation as Bilbo in The Hobbit where you're going for profit or as Frodo in The Lord of the Rings where saving the world is involved? Um, mm. That's a great question. It's kind of the point of the first, um, of the first half of The Fellowship of the Ring. Um, I, I, I do, who, am I going by myself with a bunch of people I don't know or am I going with my best friend Samwise Gamgee? Or am I Samwise Gamgee in this situation? I don't. I, I don't know. And I, the, the noble answer, right, is that we're saving the world, right? Yeah, but also, like, I feel like Bilbo was kind of coerced into going. Yeah, he didn't really get the choice. Like he he he. I guess he went. I, I think Prophet was not high on his um, motivation list. Um, I would I would go on either of those quests. It became just sign me up. Well, okay. Give me a couple days, and I'll get back to you with the paperwork. <laughs> uh, Caleb wants to know what our favorite dinosaur is. <laughs> he says his is the T Rex, one of the largest and fiercest dinosaurs. You know that game that when your computer is offline and it's the T Rex running and jumping game, where you just hit the mm-hmm. spacebar to make him jump over the the cactuses and all that. That's what the T Rex thing makes me think of. And honestly, probably it's a T Rex. What it, it is a pretty large and fierce dinosaur. Do you have another answer besides the T Rex? Yeah, I really like the Ankylosaurus or the Ankylosaurus. That's the one that has like armored plates and spikes and a big club for a tail. Mm. I think that one's really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, that is That's a good question. All right, Graham, we got what? One more question here? Yep, just the one. And then, of course, next time we're going to have, in a couple of weeks, we're going to have our episode with Karina where we ask, we, have, we answer more questions, but with her. All right, what's that question, Graham? That last one. <laughs> So Eddie says, every episode, you ask the authors three questions. We ask them, Cheetos or Doritos, cookies or cake, savory or sweet? So I think he wants to know what our answers to those would be. 
I've been thinking right now, currently, it is Doritos for me because, and I know this because the coffee shop next to the bookstore has little baskets with those little individual bags of chips. And regularly, I get famished and need to get through the rest of the day or, you know, through a, you know, until get to the next meal. And so I will go over there and I will get myself one of those little bags of chips. And I have been consistently grabbing Doritos. So, I'm going to say that right now it's Doritos. Um, but you know, if you put some Cheetos in front of me, I'm not going to not going to knock them on the floor or anything. What about you? I I know this one hasn't changed for me. It's it's always Doritos. Um and it's the Cool Ranch ones. I don't really like the cheese ones. I know that's probably most people's favorite, but I grew up on those ranch ones and I think they're Yeah, incredible. they're delicious. Uh but I like the I like Cheetos too. Yeah, right. I'm a cake person more than cookies, but who doesn't love delicious cookies when they're fresh out of the oven? That would be if I, if you, you know, like your wife makes delicious chocolate chip cookies. It would be tough to, it would be very difficult to say those are not better than most cakes. But then also, a delicious, she also makes delicious cakes. So, you know, shout out to Ashley, I guess is what I'm saying. Yep. This is, this one's nearly impossible. I don't know. It, it depends. Um, and that's why we like asking these questions because they're difficult, but I don't like answering them. Exactly. Um, I know. So, right. Yeah. This is the last Probably, time. I definitely eat more cookies than cake, but mm, when a cake <laughs> comes out, I want to eat that too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, savory or sweet, Graham? For snacking, usually sweet. Um, for dinner, I'm going to go savory. Shocking. <laughs> yeah i don't i don't know it doesn't it doesn't matter yeah any, anything yeah just give it all um, to I, us you know what i don't Faulty want it. i don't sweet. want i don't want i don't want my i don't want my candy savory and i don't want my steak sweet so there you go perfect well graham that brings us to the end of question patriza part one and like David said earlier, we are going to do a special bonus episode this season, which we are calling Question Patriza Part 2 or Part two. Question Patriza Part 2 <laughs> Question Patriza Part Patuza. Part Tuza. Oh, man. <laughs> and that's going to feature oh. Karina Yang Glazer. Now, um, that probably won't be up next Friday. Uh, okay. Be a couple of weeks. It'd probably just be a couple weeks, but it is a bonus episode. So don't think about like, oh, I have to wait uh, longer for this episode. Just think there's more with you window coming sometime. And I don't know when. It'll be a surprise. Yes. So we're getting Karina's schedule. We can't wait to talk to her. Um, but in the meantime, thank you to all the guests who came on during this whole season. Thank you to all of you who listened and sent in questions and answers to riddles and answers to lazy words and all kinds of stuff like that. We had a great time this season and we got more. We got that bonus episode coming and then we've got more Withy Window coming in the fall. Give us a couple months off to, to prep the next season. We know that'll be a great disappointment to four of you. Um, and the rest of you will be like, finally, Withy Window is gone for two months. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> and the four people who aren't upset who are not uh, who are uh, upset that it's going to be gone are our children <laughs> <laughs> that's not um, true that's true, that's true. It, they're, they're going to be the happy ones <laughs> well yeah Graham this has been fun anything else you want to add before we before we go uh, nope I'm just going to um, keep working on this giant orange that I found see if I could eat Graham, this whole thing and then Graham, um, Graham, Graham yeah what Graham my words of advice as we end this episode: don't, don't eat, don't eat the basketball. That's probably not going to be. Good. Oh yeah! All right, I got Remember, it. If got your it. food bounces, don't, don't eat it. Eat it. Okay, got it. Right, right. And with that, for Graham Pittman, I'm David Kern. Until next time, happy reading. Goodbye.